I'll just upload my most recent. Did this earlier today, but just make sure it's there. Just give me a sec. So yeah, I guess I'll uh, like to thank everyone for uh, being here to listen to the presentation. And um, I know time is of the essence, so uh, if you do have any questions, you can always use the chat bar as well, and I'll try and address them at the end uh, on top of a few questions. Um, I'm going to try and beat that red light as far as uh, being within the time parameters, and I should be uh, in and around 10 minutes. So uh, it's loaded here. Okay, so I guess I'll start with the reason and the passion behind uh, this thesis work. Uh, being a father of three young girls, of which two of them entering the kindergarten this September, coming September, uh, of course this process of thesis work I tried to align with my previous two years of educational studies as well, combining a newfound love for technology and education. It wasn't until I spoke with several close friends and family members and questioned them about their own children and their personal access to social media that I realized how significant this research would be going forward. Throughout my literature review, I see a lot of validity in future research, as I quickly realized this topic was very fresh and trendy among school boards, educators, and parents. The idea of social media literacy in the educational system is there. In some cases, aspects of social media are explored throughout varying media and digital literacy programs. With the way that social media evolves month to month, day to day, it becomes very challenging to update this curriculum with digital changes, and educators are burdened with extra work, and in many cases left unsupported. Growing concern is found throughout younger audiences, as children as young as seven years old are technically proficient in several digital spaces today. According to Howard 2013, children seven to 13 years old spend on average 30% of their time awake on internet-connected digital devices. Now, it wasn't until the concerns of digital personal development, uh, specifically within self-image, was explored that I understood the need for educational advances. Instances of Facebook depression were apparent amongst children connected to social media, and children as young as nine years old are suffering from anxiety and sleep deprivation due to social interactions online. So the access to information and through devices is abundant. We all know the power of peer influence. But children today are finding social media to be the super peer. The power of messages and media influence online is strong, especially with audiences that have not been subjected to this material before. Self-image and understanding self-esteem brought me to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. By looking at Maslow's hierarchy of needs and forming a conclusion based on our human desires to reach self-actualization, I realized just how important self-confidence, satisfaction, and discipline are. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a psychological theory of human motivation. Before we can reach self-actualization, we need to build our sense of self. Developing yourself and building your self-esteem today is done digitally. The way in which we build our confidence, discipline, and reach satisfaction is very much determined by the influence social media has on oneself. Looking at pedagogical strategies that focused on online literacy education or social media education, especially amongst children, proved very difficult. But uncovering the self-image concerns and reviewing material relevant to these concerns or conflicted areas that children are exposed to online, I felt the need to explore constructivist learning strategies. Looking at the work of Cindy Mello Silver, 2006, on problem-based learning, it showed that scaffolding and minimal guidance are in fact a very important part of PBL and effectively making the learning tangible, stating that educational scaffolding can reduce cognitive load provide expert guidance, and help students acquire disciplinary ways of thinking and acting. Further investigations into learner cognitive development uncovered Vygotsky's 1978 work surrounding the zone of proximal development. ZPD, the zone of proximal development, refers to the comfort level of the learner and when to assist with peer or a more knowledgeable other through the use of problem-solving techniques which guide the learner. So this brings me to my research question. What educational practice is effective in introducing aspects of social media education and promoting positive self-image amongst children? Well, the literature review developed my theoretical framework into something like this in the bottom left. Using Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs and focusing on constructivist learning theories, I wanted to uncover more. Using a qualitative metasynthesis approach in which I strived at pulling current studies from 2006 forward to find relevant information as to what is happening now with children online and with regards to educational strategies that accompany them. 2006 was also the boom of social networking as we know it and the expansion and mass public takeover of Facebook. Mainly social media sites like Facebook have age walls in place as I'm sure we all know. Usually they're set at around 13 years of age for registration purposes. So I defined children for the purpose of this study as ages 7 to 13 and focused on finding information relevant to that age group going forward.
I was also influenced by the work of Wayne Awe 2007 in producing my data collection and coding in a similar manner as it helped me understand this type of academic research. So the reasons behind my codes and how I came to develop them. Well, discussions inside of the context of the positive pedagogy code, which is referred to as PP, evolved based on additional keywords that surrounded the internet, web, interactive, technologies, and connection. This led to the evolution into an OPP code, referred to as Online Positive Pedagogy, which posed additional context relevant to keywords such as group, collaboration, student-centered, peer, and problem-based discussion. From there, I was able to identify forms of online pedagogy and a learning theory that accompanied it. With my three indicators that derived from my dependent variable, I was able to develop six codes. These codes looked at the positive and negative sides of self-esteem as they applied to interviews, transcripts, and dialogue that surrounded children's interactions online. I was able to generate a combination code that was found in 23 instances of these conversations. This code helped me identify problematic situations as it showed a positive, confident action while receiving self-satisfaction, but through negative discipline. So in the following examples, I will detail exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> we will see how children receive self-satisfaction from oneself or peers through a confident yet undisciplined online action. In one European study in 2013, a group of British 11 to 12 year old girls discussed how funny it was when someone asked them to take down a nasty image of them online. They refused. They continued to share a host of stories about dodgy images of themselves and mixed humor about the scenario. In another 2014 study, an 8th grader created a fake profile of her principal, which could only be seen by her peers, but it included the actual photo of the principal and made claims that he was a sex addict and also hinted that he was a pedophile. Outlining instances like this allowed me to explore how we can better educate problematic situations that happen within social media settings. If stronger education surrounding the thought process of online social interactions is done, a more disciplined or competent user will arise. So according to Howard 2013, he states that lessons inside of Web 2.0 technologies that use static screenshots of Facebook pages may be helpful in teaching students how to set up their privacy settings or how to interact or how to interact appropriately with one another online. In another 2014 study, one teacher used online forms to practice extensive vocabulary and spelling skills. Students were asked to create sentences in class and combine it online with an additional list of words. The teacher encouraged further participation and even wrote comments to create a sense of community within these forms. She noticed that students were creative and funny in response. Many students enjoyed the social aspects of creating and posting sentences for peer review. According to Margus in 2013, teachers reflected that students had time to construct and even edit their responses to questions and comments online. So, Chio in 2012 believes that Web 2.0 resources increase students' creativity when reasoning and problem solving. They enhance interactivity and develop professional growth. <clears throat> These websites offer a gateway for online identity construction. Mendia's 2010 and according to Rios 2008 state that research and theory has students learn through the experience of problem solving and they can learn both content and thinking strategies better. Alternative learning styles like PBL can help students with teamwork, real life scenario problems and development of more problem solving skills. Mergeson 2013 explains that one 8th grade class was able to leave comments for teachers online and sometimes other people, the classmates, would answer them. According to Samuel and Wright 2014, positive mediation shows an increase in discipline and confidence related to the other online domains. Furthermore, a child's peers provide a source of mediation by supporting each other through sharing negative online experiences. So techniques like these resemble a problem-based learning or student-centered approach to learning inside of Web 2.0. Online socially shared experiences prepare children for the social media world. It allows children to learn from peers, who review, comment, add and critique information in a suitable online environment. Samuel and Wright 2014 state that e-safety education should aim at empowering children. Awareness raising should be directed towards the development of effective skills and preventative measures. What seems harmless on some levels is directly impacting the well-being of their future development as individuals in a social networking world. So what educational practice is effective in introducing aspects of social media education and promoting positive self-image amongst children? Children should come to understand social media sites today as well as problematic peer situations online through the use of Web 2.0. If an ad additional educational framework is used 
like a forum, blog, wiki, or social networking site, it poses the ideal environment to explore constructivist learning strategies. By further influencing peer discussion and promoting connections inside of these digital spaces, educators can help children come to understand their social spaces and start to build a user who is more confident, disciplined, and self-satisfied by actions online. So I'd just like to say very quickly thank you for your time and listening to this presentation. Um, I'll look now to the chat for any comments over the past little while. And um, I would also like to thank Dr. Uh, Van Oosveen. He has been a great mentor these past uh, six, seven, eight months. And it was a great learning experience. And I really appreciated that support, as well as you guys, my peers, and family for uh, pumping my tires when they were very deflated. So thanks, guys. <laughs> And any questions, if you, I can field a couple, I hope, I think I was around 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, perfect timing, Brendan. So yeah, we've got some time for questions. If folks have questions, if you want to use the chat, or feel free to use your audio as well for questions for Brendan. Thanks for the kind word, guys. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it's just been a really good process. It's definitely a passion of mine. Um, like I stated from the beginning, uh, three young girls, uh, you guys know twins, they're entering, uh, two of them will be entering in September. So, um, yeah, I'm very much concerned with kind of, uh, how much they're going to be on these devices and, uh, especially the internet connected ones. So if anyone does have a question or two, I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> And then I think uh, Wendy was asking in terms of your own kids, how that affects your perspective on this particular research. Well, just from the get-go, um, it was uh, a lot of things were alarming. And, um, you know, uh, I've been in this uh, a digital program now for two years, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very much aware of uh, the spaces. Um, just it's concerning just seeing how young kids are accessing these uh, technologies and uh, the hardwares are very easily accessible and now a lot of the softwares have uh, integration with online features so basically everything's connected to the internet so um, and it's only going to get more connected so um, it's just easy for them to be I don't know it's easy for them to explore and for them to uh, see material that they don't really understand completely so I think there has to just be you know more education, either from a parent's side or an educator side, just to ensure that they uh, that they understand a lot of these uh, messages, in particular the ones in social media. They are very powerful. Yeah, and I, I said from the get-go, a lot of family and uh, friends, um, you know, I explored a lot of interest. It wasn't until I went to a family gathering a couple months prior to Christmas, um, around Thanksgiving time, and I had asked the majority of my cousins about their children's uh, interactions, and a lot of them were, you know, some of them were aware, some of them were concerned, some of them weren't, so it was kind of like, oh, okay, and I had only done, at that point, a little bit of my literature review, and I realized, like, geez, there's a... Uh, <laughs> People should be a little bit concerned. <laughs> so hopefully the uh, and I, I a lot of my literature review did uncover that the educational system is aware and it is becoming uh, like I said a very trendy topic right now, especially over the past year or two. And um, you know I'm sure we we all see the reports. It seems like uh, kids young younger are getting into uh, mischief that they shouldn't be getting into. And uh, I think a lot of that has to do with the, uh, the social domains online, and just ways kids are connecting and getting together. I'd say I found a lot of lit on the topic, uh, Janet, um, but the target age was challenging and then the whole perspective of wanting to stay with children, um, you know, what is what is children? Um, the class of child or children changes a lot, the definition, and then you get into terms like adolescent and uh, preteen and um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a tangled web. Using the term youth was in the early stages, but uh, I wanted to stay true to, uh, you know, the elementary side and the K to 8. So, um, yeah, too much literature at times, I would say. I think we all went through that. <laughs> Yeah, 
And Brendan, there was just a question by Roland in terms of, do you think that your perspective may have biased your anything a little bit in terms of the literature? Um, I would say, I don't think, uh, you know, from the get-go, I think uh, myself as well as many of us kind of uh, jumped the gun and we were kind of looking for an answer in the early, uh, the early going. And um, I think the literature review did kind of play out um, a lot of, you know, where things were going to go in the data collection. But um, as far as the, the direct connection and the validity behind it all, that was the most rewarding part because I saw it in September, October, and I was like, you know, kind of, you know, stating the conclusion long before the conclusion was even anywhere in sight. But then to get there and to see how there was a lot of validity in that thinking and, um, yeah, it was a really rewarding process. It was great. <laughs> Um, I guess I am biased in the constructivist learning uh, standpoint as I just feel that it's helped me a great deal over these past couple of years and uh, a lot of my research uh, in the ADT program has surrounded uh, aspects of it and it's, uh, yeah, I just think it's, I don't know, it's just a good form to, uh, to educate, especially new material. And Stephen, I think you had your hand up. Did you have something to add as well? Uh, my question is more, more like towards the future. I was wondering if you were to continue following like this area of research, like say you had another year to develop this further, where do you think you might go with that? That's a really good question, and I thought about that a couple weeks ago, like how much deeper does the wormhole go? Like, you know, it's still, um, you know, a little bit broad. Um, <clears throat> specific but I think it can get more specific um, uh, maybe looking at like uh, specifically um, maybe just trying to find more data behind um, interviews or interactions uh, I guess the more you uncover through finding transcripts and actual dialogue um, you know things that you can actually justify uh, I guess applying codes to and being able to show that you know um, this is problematic. Um, like I was able to do that in a lot of instances and it wasn't until I made my extravagant code and saw it a few times that I was able to really connect um, just the way that these problematic situations were kind of unfolding. And it was just basically through um, my, my three indicators and it, um, yeah, I guess just more data would be, I guess, my answer to that, Stephen. As more data unfolds, there's going to be a more specific information to come from it. So I don't know if that answered it, sorry. <laughs> but thank you everyone very much for the questions. I don't know if there's any more. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it greatly. And I should pass it off. I know time is of the essence tonight. And I know we'll probably be racing the clock all evening. <laughs> Thanks, Brendan. I actually am just going to do a time check. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, and again, thanks for all the questions. But thanks for going first. It's always uh, good to, to be the first one to start. So thank you so much, Brendan. Um, and I think we've got Liz next. So I'll just uh, stop sharing this. And then Liz, if you need to load anything, go ahead. <laughs>